hey, my name's Tim Buell. I'm a drummer. I live here in Nashville, Tennessee. And, you know, I've toured with artists like Janet Kramer and Gloriana and Jared Neiman and Remedy Drive and Cody Fry. And I also do a lot of recording at home. So I consider myself a touring and recording professional drummer. But a lot of what I do also ends up being mixing audio, both for my podcast and YouTube videos and stuff like this. So today I want to talk about how you can take a mix from this... to this. And we're actually gonna do this with only using one Plugin. So Black Friday is coming up, and when Black Friday happens, a lot of plugin companies will sell discount, heavily discounted plugins, all kinds. And you know, whether you're just starting recording or you've been doing it a while, the world of plugins can get overwhelming. There's a trillion different EQs, a billion different compressors. There's these magic things with one knob, and you turn it, and it makes things sound better. And it can be really hard to know, like, what is going to work for me. So as you can see in this mix, I'm only running the same exact plugin on every single channel, except the master, which has a um, loudness meter and then just a little like uh, maximizer limiter thing on there so that everything can be kind of leveled. And I think this Black Friday, when things go on sale, you can probably find this plugin for probably, like, I think I bought it for $19.99. Normally it's on its regular prices, like for around 40 bucks. But this one plugin I think is so amazing because it gets you compression, EQ, all this stuff, all in one plugin. And it's called Shep's Omni Channel. And this is definitely my desert island plugin. If I could only take one <laughs> plugin with me in the world, it would be this one because of just how much stuff it does. So let me walk you through what I'm doing with this plugin and show you kind of how it works. So this is the interface of it. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff going on here. You have some saturation, some filters, a gate, a de compression and EQ. Don't get bogged down in that. We're gonna look at all of that a little bit more later. But what I wanna do is I wanna play this track again and show you just by taking these buses, the drum bus, the track, and then the master and putting this plugin on the, those three individually, this is how it can transform it. So here's without it. <laughs> So just the work that this plugin does on a bus or a master bus is like a lot. Hey, sorry to interrupt this video, but if you're liking this video, I put out a bunch of stuff like this on my YouTube channel. So subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or opinions, like you disagree with me, put them below in the comments. And then, you know, in the description, there's be links to other videos that you might enjoy as well. You can hop over to my website. I have courses on how to record and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I also have a bunch of free resources over on my website. So pop over there if you are into free things or you want to support the YouTube channel by, you know, downloading a course or ebook or whatever. So, um, all right, subscribe, comment, go buy some stuff on the website and back to the video. So with the drums, basically what I'm doing here is, let me solo out the drums. On the drum bus, basically what we're doing is, again, a little bit of compression and a little bit of EQ and then a little bit of saturation. Uh, so here are the drums. This is before. Kind of thin and not really focused.
all I've done is put this plugin on the bus and it already sounds worlds better. Everything sounds warmer. Everything sounds a little more focused. Everything's a little beefier. That's kind of the first thing that I like about this is it has a lot of character to it. So you can dial in a little bit of saturation. You can dial in a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ to just either shape a bus or you can use it on individual channels. Let me just go through. I'll solo out each one individually and we will kind of take a listen to what the plugin does. So here we go. So that's a kick in mic. Sounds good, but kind of boring. So this is really just kind of like beefing up the attack of it, scooping out some of the lows because I have a kick out mic, so I don't need to do that. Doing a little bit of compression and some saturation. And I really like the saturation in this thing because, you know, a lot of times a saturation plugin just kind of has like one knob. This has three different saturation algorithms and you can dial it into taste. So on every single track, you can have slightly different versions of saturation, which is going to add up to a better mix. Let's go to the kick out mic. Cool, but kind of clean and boring. That's giving it some serious attitude, more low end. And I've also used the gate here so that it's not rumbling around too much. Snare top, that's with it off. So just making the snare a little snappier, a little more aggressive. Snare crunch. So what I'm doing with the snare crunch is I'm doing a lot of compression, but I'm also brightening it a bunch because the other snare top mic uh, has a lot of low end and a lot of mid range. And this, I just kind of want to add bark and aggression to the snare. So that's what I'm doing there. Uh, snare bottom. Using the gate again, because I really don't want to hear this rattling around unless there's a snare backbeat. Here's the rack tom. So there again, I'm using the gate. I'm adding a lot of warmth and a lot of fatness to that tom. I'm doing the same thing for the floor tom. That's before. That's after. Uh, the hi-hat probably doesn't have much. Just brightening it up and cleaning it up a bunch. These are the overheads. Sound great, but they're a little muffly and dark, so this is probably gonna add some compression, brighten them up. Adds a little bit of top end sparkle. Not really doing any compression, actually. But the, the compressor, even though it's really not gain reducing anything, it adds a little bit of beef. Listen to when I kick it in. Uh, that's because there's a big gain boost down here. Duh, that's why. Uh, but I'm doing a little saturation too. This is a cool little crotch area mic that I have. A lot of mid-range, just adding, filling in the hole. Close mics don't usually have good mid-range. They kind of sound honky, but this mic sounds cool with the mid-range. Here's another room mic thing. Again, a lot of mid-range and a lot of like bite and presence to the drums. These are my guitar, this is my guitar pedal mic. Just adding a lot of grain and grit. These are the room mics, the close room mics. A lot of compression. This is adding a lot of smack and a lot of air around the drums. So instead of using reverb, I'm doing a really heavy compression thing here. So before. Huge difference. And then on this last room mic, this 
same thing. I'm adding a lot of brightness. I'm making sure that there's not much low end in here so that it's not muddying things up. And then I'm also using the gate in a clever way where if I take this gate off, that's a lot of um, air and space. And I, I like the room mic. I like the vibe and kind of the grit and depth it gives the drums, but that's a little too much. The cymbals are in there a little too much. So when I put the gate on, I'm actually not turning, when the gate is active, I'm not turning it down, you know, all the way so that the mic is cutting off. I'm only ducking it by like 15 dB. So what it's really doing is it's just opening up on the kick and snare stuff, but closing down on everything else. So you get cool air and vibe around the kick and snare, but then it closes down so it's not bleeding cymbals into everything. So here are the drums without any of the individual plugins, but already having the bus compression on there. And here's with everything. Obviously, you can totally transform a mix just by using this one plugin. I mean, look at how beautiful it looks to just have one plugin running across everything. So the other thing I like about this plugin is that it seems to be really light on CPU. When I'm actually tracking drums, I actually run this plugin on my room mic and my drum bus because it gives, it shapes the drums a little bit. And, you know, it doesn't seem to add too much latency. And a way that they've done that is it's really clever. So when you have the plugin running, anything that's lit up orange right now means it's active and it's taking up CPU, but what you can do is you can actually turn off these different modules. So let's say that, you know, while I'm tracking, I don't want compression on and I don't want this saturation on. I can turn those off and they stop taking CPU, but it leaves the EQ on. And you can also, you know, totally move every part of this plugin around. So let's say that maybe you want your compressor to come first in the signal chain. You can do that. You just move the compressor over there. So it really just has a ton of flexibility. And I think for me as a drummer, when I'm recording drums at home, I want to be able to record and hear things like, like, you know, sometimes I'm working on a song and I know that the drums need to have like lots of room mic and, you know, super compressed, aggressive, crazy sounding room mic stuff. I don't want to do that with an outboard compressor that's actually going to print compression while I'm tracking, because that means that it can never be undone. But what I do want to do is I want to, while I'm playing, I want to hear what a ton of aggressive compression is going to do to a room mic because it might change how I hit cymbals or how I hit the drums. So I can run this plugin. It doesn't take much CPU. I can pull this plugin up, dial in some crazy compression, record to it and let it inform my performance, but then turn it off or, you know, dial it back or whatever. So let's hear one more time all that we've done here. I'm going to turn all of the instances of this Shep's Omni Channel off play it and then I'll turn it on. And I mean, I, the, the difference is insane. I mean, it's just crazy. 